Have you ever found yourself in a heated argument with someone, struggling to find a way out? Or maybe you just want to improve your relationships with others? Well, in this video, I'm going to teach you how to win any discussion and influence others. So sit back, relax, and get ready to become a master of communication. But before we continue, my name is Joseph. I'm a six-year medical student, and I aspire to one day become a psychiatrist. Shut up, no one cares. Yeah, I know not the first thing people usually associate with medicine, but who cares? Now, I make videos about topics I find interesting, and I love sharing facts with friends and family. And you, my dear viewer, Talking to you, you can be a part of that family and everything you gotta do, I mean, you know what to do. Subscribe, you sexy son of a gun. So everything I discuss in this video comes straight out of this book. I don't have my copy here, it's back home in Norway, but it doesn't matter. But this book, this book is pure gold. I bought it for four euros and it's the best money I've ever spent. Words can't describe how much I love this book. It is so good. It is, oof, oof it is so good. So stick around, because in this video, I'm gonna share the highlights of this book and it's you're gonna be happy you watched this video, so don't worry about it. So this book contains simple yet brilliant principles for interacting with people, how to get them to see your way of thinking, and getting them to like you. Just to emphasize, because I know some people out there might think, oh shit, he's gonna teach us how to manipulate. It's not manipulation. This is about genuinely connecting with people, recognizing their value, and treating them accordingly. You know, be real with people. Just as I know, this video is divided into three segments. First part is general principles. The second part is how to approach arguments. And the third segment is how to give feedback and change someone else's behavior. Or the timestamps, and you can also find them in the description below. So here's the thing, everyone wants to feel important, right? If you make someone feel important, they'll be like, hey, this guy seems pretty cool. But if you make them feel like they don't matter, they're gonna be like, the fuck is wrong with this person? Just keep that in mind. Appeal to the other person's interests. About 99% of people care more about what they want than what you want, and that's completely normal. It's just how the ego operates. One way to win someone over is to show them that you care about what they care about. This means taking the time to understand their needs and desires and finding ways to align your goals with theirs. When you approach a conversation or negotiation from this perspective, you're more likely to find common grounds and reach a mutually beneficial outcome. So remember, people are more willing to listen and engage when they feel heard and understood. So take the time to listen to the other person's perspective, ask questions, and show that you value their input. By doing so, you're not only going to improve your relationships, but you're also going to improve the chances of success in any situation. If your only tool is a hammer, then every other problem looks like a nail. Next time you're having a discussion, ask yourself, what is it that this person wants? Everyone has something they can teach you, and recognizing this can lead to genuine interest and appreciation for others. Angry people are often angry because they feel unheard. Once you show empathy and understanding, their anger will substantially decrease. Approach people with a positive attitude. Smile and be happy. People are naturally drawn to those who give off positive energy and good vibes. Knowing someone's name is the biggest respect. Pronouncing a person's name is the most important way of showing respect in any language. Use it often and with respect. If he tells you his name is You say it just like his parents do. It shows character and effort and it shows that you care. Be a good listener. If you're like me with fucking big ass ears, use them. Encourage others to talk about themselves. Ask questions they'll enjoy answering. Show love and don't give orders. When giving feedback, avoid starting with criticism or complaints. This can make the person defensive and justify their actions. Instead, starting with praise can lower their defenses and make them more open to listening to feedback. To influence people to do things, giving praise and appreciation is way more effective than giving orders. Part two, dealing with arguments. Control this beast that is our emotions. You can measure a person by what makes him or her angry. Little people get angry over little things, whilst big people don't get affected by it and they still keep their cool. Open your mind. Always approach discussions with an open mind. You can say something like, I may be wrong, I often am. And if I'm wrong, I want to change and be right. Let's discuss the facts. I know for some people it's very hard to hear this. I, I had troubles myself, but keep it in mind. Acknowledge the it's fact that you might be wrong. Give praise. During an argument, try complimenting on a trait that you think might help solve the problem. For example, you could praise their patience, open mindfulness, fairness, or willingness to consider new information. Put yourself in their shoes. Understand that every person has a valid view of the situation. Listen, if you were born as them, with their same brain and their same intellect and their same experiences, you would have done this exact same in the exact same situation. Your job is simple. Understand what led them to believe in what they believe. Guys, this is not an argument. This is a discussion. This is between you and another person trying to figure out what the problem is and you guys want to respect each other when you're trying to solve your problem. If you don't, shit is gonna hit the fan or ceiling. I don't know the metaphor, but you get my point. Just fucking, just don't do it. If you ever respond based on your emotions, just take a step back, breathe, and think it through. Don't do it, just don't do it. Express empathy for their situation. Show them that you understand. By the way, empathy, not sympathy. Empathy is beautiful. Sympathy is, mm. it's okay. It's just okay. Sympathy is feeling sorry for someone. It's like posting an Instagram story saying, fuck racism. Empathy is actively doing something to alleviate suffering. It's the idea of I'm hurting with you. Zip it and listen first. 
I know we discussed this earlier, but I have to emphasize how important this rule is. For the love of God, just give your opponent a chance to talk. If you personally hate being interrupted, then don't interrupt others. So the child needs to learn that he's not the most important person in the house. This guy does it. Ah. Ask lots of questions instead of stating commands. To make communication more effective, ask people where they think the problems are and ask for their opinion on how to proceed. Look for areas of agreement. When ready, ask a series of questions that will lead them to your conclusion. Begin by finding a common ground, then present your argument or point in a way that aligns with their beliefs. This will make them feel like they independently changed their mind. Emphasize how your position serves the other person's interest and incentives. Present the negative aspects of your approach or idea and sincerely ask for their thoughts and opinion. It has to come from your heart. By the way, here are a few potential downsides to my approach. What do you think? This approach can help to build trust and encourage open communication. Usually they'll respond with, oh, I don't think it's that big of a problem as you say, and they'll probably just try to talk themselves out of it. So don't worry about it. It's fine. And now, for the peace de resistance. Sincerely thank your opponent for their interests. Anyone who takes time to disagree with you is interested in the same thing you are. Think of them as people who really want to help you. Part three, given feedback. To make feedback easier to give, give constant praise and appreciation without asking for anything. In turn, future feedback will be better received. When introducing a point of feedback, start by praising other specific things that were done well, depending on the situation of course. Introduce the point of improvement. Okay, so this step is gonna require you to put your ego slightly to the side, so just keep that in mind. Discuss your own past mistakes. Suggest that you understand the difficulty of the task. When I was in your situation, I did the exact same thing. Remember, your ego's job is to feel important. Its survival depends on it. Unfortunately, this translates to your ego needing to fight and defend itself. So we naturally never discuss our own mistakes, but it shows character and vulnerability admitting fault in one's own character. Ask questions instead of giving orders. Ask for suggestions on how to improve things. Encourage them to invest in their own ideas. When you listen to someone and truly hear them out, it makes them feel appreciated and valued. This in turn will fill them with positive emotions. Your goal is to solve the problem and make the other person feel good about the outcome. It's a win-win situation. Win, win, win. Give the other person a good reputation to live up to. Imagine the person already has the trait you want them to have. You've always been a hard worker and I believe you'll continue showing this in the next month. Make it clear that the mistake is easy to fix and that it's not a reflection of one's abilities or talents. You can even connect the improvement to something else that he or she has already done. Communicate the improvements in a way that is relevant to the other person's interests. Target what they care about. Maybe it's doing better work, getting off of work earlier, moving up in his or her career. Who knows? But make it relevant. Tell them something they would be happy to hear. Well, family. I guess that was a quick overview of all the principles in the book How to Win Friends and Influence Others. All these principles are best applied with sincerity. Be genuinely interested in helping others achieve their interests. Without the sincerity, others will sense you're not being honest, probably see you as a fake. Keep remembering how important these principles are to you. My success in life depends on how I interact with people, but I have to say, changing your behavior is very hard. You always have to check your notes and keep practicing these principles over and over until it becomes second nature. Like a swear jar, have other people monitor you and make you pay up whenever you violate a principle. Reflect on your bad interactions and see what you could do better. Now I recommend you to re-watch this video if you didn't catch all these principles and maybe take some notes, because it, it, it can be very useful. If you ever feel like creating a new habit is hard, try to discuss it with yourself on why this new habit is important for you. Or you could read a wow. short form summary on habit forming books. I have to say shout out to them because they made making this video way easier. Speaking of short form, I reached out to them and I'm proud to say that this video is sponsored by them. Now I earn a small commission for every time you sign up using my link and all the money I'll be earning from that sponsorship will go back into creating more videos for you guys. And gals. But for those of you who don't know what short form is, short form is in my humble opinion the best way to learn ideas from any book. It's both clearly and simply explained. It's like your smartest friend explaining the book for you. They cover so many topics and I'm pretty sure something will appeal to your interests. As you guys already know, one of my favorite books is How to Win Friends and Influence People. Their guide helped me to better understand and apply these principles discussed in the book. Honestly, I understood the book's ideas better than reading the book itself. You can learn a book at different levels. You could start by reading the one page summary and then go deeper and read the full guide if you're interested. Short Form drops new book guides and articles weekly and as subscribers, me and hopefully you, we get to vote on what books they should cover next, which is pretty nice and very thoughtful of them. If you want a free trial with unlimited access and an additional 20% discount on the annual subscription, join Shortform through my special link, shortform.com slash JB, or you could click the link in the description. So if you're like me, who's constantly short on time, Shortform is probably the perfect solution for you. Now it's not a replacement for a book, but it is nice to read the summary before reading the whole book. Personally, I feel like I understand the books way better after having read the Shortform summary. By the way, I've been using their services for a while and I don't want to advertise for something that I truly don't use myself or think is a good product. Now I used Blinkist before short form, I think two months before and honestly I ended up picking short form at the end of the day because I feel I got more out of it. But I mean 
try it out. I mean, you have a free link down below if you're interested. So check it out. Actually, when I when I come to think of it, I, I think it's probably the best money I've ever spent is buying a short from subscription. Completely unbiased. I know it's uh, I know we're sponsored and everything, but I, I, I genuinely mean it. Anyways, you can also find a link to my website in the description below with a written summary of what we discussed in this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And if you haven't already subscribed, what are you waiting for? I mean, it takes a few seconds and it would mean the world to me. Now get out of here, beautiful person.